want to get right into something that caught the Hollywood, the entertainment mountain, Lance, totally off guard this week, <laughs> and that's the movie <laughs> Jesus Revolution. Look at this. It won a uh, cinema score, a plus. Uh, it was number three at the box office. Now, you say, well, what's the big deal about being number three? That says that many people have gone to see it. I know a lot of my friends have said, we're going to go back mm -hmm. to see it again. I believe this weekend will probably be even better, uh, this week's totals. Uh, so, I mean, <clears throat> this is a wonderful thing. But listen, I went to see the movie. Nobody here on the panel tonight went to see it but me. I've seen it. It is a great movie. <laughs> you guys should go see this movie. If you got saved during the Jesus movement or anywhere close to it, it will bring back wonderful, wonderful memories. It's a great story, and you will enjoy it. And if you don't know anything about it, it's a great way to get involved with it and understand historically what God did. Now, here's the interesting thing, Pastor Hank. This thing happened, uh, Asbury, 1970. We see this resurgence of a new, of a well being yeah. redug again. And right the week after that breaks, I think it's right, the week after it is this movie comes out, The Jesus Revolution. There's no possible way this could have been orchestrated by man. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm excited about is back in 2019 when the Lord prophesied that there would be a plague that would come to the earth and things would be harsh and there would be a decade of difference. He said, but there would be, watch this, a revolution of light. Yeah. And I think the fact that this movie, I haven't seen, it's called The Jesus Revolution is just that. It's part of the revolution of light where God is overthrowing darkness. He's piercing the darkness, but he's also invading the entertainment industry the movie industry, and I believe that it is part of Matthew 4, 16, that those that sat in darkness are seeing a great light. So I'm excited. Let it, man, let Jesus be magnified, Thank and I pray saying. that people will get their hearts renewed and even saved. So I'm excited about it. Amen. Me too. All right. If you haven't seen the movie, don't know what we're talking about, watch this. Our country is a dark and divided place. But in that tent, there's hope and unity and miracles that I can't even explain. I'd like you to meet my new friend, Lonnie Frisbee, and some of his friends. Welcome. These kids are runaways, most of them. And they need our help. Chuck, stop. They don't belong here. Agreed? There's this church. It's called Calvary Chapel. When we say we're looking for truth, what if this is true? Because everything that we've been trying is not working for me. down again. Look what I felt in there. I haven't... What if it's good for a minute and then it's gone one day? We can find out together. Seems the movement's everywhere. Los Angeles, even in the South. It's spreading like wildfire. Is this the beach where people get baptized? We drove all the way here. Where from? Texas. Jeez. I don't know if any of this is real. I kind of hope it is, to be honest. It's a family, man. Don't give up on it. Yes, Jesus Revolution. All right, so last week... We showed you a clip from Kelsey Grammer on the Today Show. Today, I want to show you another clip, Kelsey Grammer on the Tonight Show. Watch this. Uh, what, <laughs> what drew you to, uh, to do this film? Well, the truth is, I was, uh, I, was, I was having a sort of a meditative evening one night in my home, and I was up pretty late. It was about 3, 4 in the morning. And I started to think, what, I, I want to do something worthwhile, something that has a bigger purpose than just me. And... Uh, I was kind of saying a prayer, I guess, and uh, the next morning, the script lands on my door, and I read it, and I said, 
It's a sign. Okay. That's a sign. That's it. I'm doing this Jesus story. So yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, well, this script came to you. I'm so excited. Yeah. I want to show everyone a clip. Here's Kelsey Grammer in Jesus Revolution. Take a look at this. You tell me right now where my daughter is. Jeanette! What? Here. Who is this? Claudie. Hi. Hi. Uh, would you mind just uh, stepping outside for a minute, Mr. Not at all. Frisbee, Lonnie Frisbee. Frisbee. Thank you. Sugar by any chance. What is going on? You said you wanted God to send you a hippie. I said that. But I did not mean it. Right what a Grant. what a great clip there, Lance. Uh, you know, did you? One thing you'll enjoy about watching this movie, uh, you will go back in time to the '70s, music, clothes, uh, as well as capturing what really happened. I mean, this is it's a wonderful film, and I I want you to see it. I hope you see it real soon. I think your family's all <laughs> out seeing it tonight. But talk about <laughs> why this is this is a great example, Lance, of what you talk about in our flash talk. This is. Just yeah. one step into the gate of influence on that entertainment mount. Well, there's a couple of things that make this great, and that's uh, the fact that it's the third biggest selling box office thing, which and I hate to say it, but that's the language, uh, that's the only tongue that Hollywood actually learns how to talk, is, is, the, is attendance in the theaters. So you've got this movie showing once again that if you'll create content that resonates with uh, the people, the marketplace, it's going to succeed. Now, it just is interesting to me that it happens to come right now celebrating the, get this, the Asbury Revival Jesus Movement. This is 1970 to 1975. So I'm um, watching this thing today, Gene, and, and out of nowhere in my uh, YouTube feed, Lonnie Frisbee shows up with Catherine Coleman and That's Chuck right. Smith. Fra I keep calling him Frazier. It's Kelsey Grammer's playing, you know, uh, right. you know, Chuck Smith. And there's a there's a YouTube you can watch, and Lonnie Frisbee, he is every inch the hippie that you know yeah. you know you can imagine. And Catherine Coleman, it's so it's so surreal sitting next to him talking about his new birth, and you realize. This is a movement. I'm, I'm a little excited about it because I see the old and the young because we got saved in the 70s. We were part of that movement. And I believe that now the most lost generation we ever had, the Gen Zs, are for the first time going to be, ex be exposed to a revival. The kids at Asbury, what they're saying is, I've never been in a revival. I've never seen what I always heard about it. This is great. They're going to finally have a visitation. Only our generation it's going to be a little easier than Chuck Smith. We've been praying for this, so I think it's going right. to come fast. Yeah, John Graves, let me bring you in here on the discussion. When you see things like this happening, uh, it's, you know, and, and Lance touched on it, it's the world standard is going, oh, look, this is a good film. It's good writing, good producing. <laughs> you know, we know the real story. Because i got to tell you, I sat there and watched the movie and started crying almost from the top. I know you. I know mm. you guys find that hard to believe, but uh, I mean, it was it was quite an emotional journey. Gene has journey. a soft spot. I do, I do find that hard <laughs> to believe, but yes, it's true. Uh, but John, this is uh, what a great door that's opened for reformation, revival, all those things that Lance has been talking about is coming into fruition right here, right now, in the midst. May I say, in 1968, when this film is set. Uh, there was it was a total disaster going on in America. Mm -hmm. We had Vietnam. Right. We had all sorts of things happening. The, in the midst of that, God poured out. And look at this. Here we are again, and God's doing something all over again, John. Yeah, and I want to tie something, Gene, together of what everyone has said tonight on Flashpoint. It, it, even the quotes in here, yeah, I asked for a hippie, but I didn't mean it. Well, we've been praying, like Lance just said, for a revival. Be careful because it doesn't come the way our, his, his ways are higher than our ways. The way our understanding is, be careful that when you pray for something, if it doesn't look exactly like our limited mind we see in part, know in part, it, it wants to be, you got to be open to what God's doing. My wife said something I thought that was brilliant when people were upset about, you know, somebody talking about Jesus in the Super Bowl commercial. Now the Asbury revival, now the Jesus revolution. It's like, do you think God's not able to start something and finish? And people get so offended with his starts 
hearts sometimes are humble and messy and don't look like we want them to look, whether it's Moses or Jesus, all the way through church history. And yet he's faithful to finish what he starts. And the, the thing I want to say, Hank said it's a revolution of light. I want to say this to all our listeners. You are the light. And too many of us have hidden our light under a bushel, under a basket. We're not influencing the culture and it's now time to shine. Turn your light on. This is just one more tool of how the Holy Spirit is moving. And I believe he's calling each and every one of us out to get out of the shadows, start using your voice, start being a light because people are lost in this darkness and God is sparking up lights all over, but it begins with the body of Christ. There were a lot of the hippie movement, the, the Jesus freaks, as they like to be called, uh, that came to church. And it told, and, and now it's hard for people to understand. But back then, to come into church without a tie on was, you know, crazy, and much less to come in with jeans, a tattered t shirt, and no shoes on. Uh, and, and how dare you bring drums in the church? And guitars. I mean, this was right. this really uh, this really challenged the status quo. No, it really did. I remember my spiritual mom was in uh, what what part? Of, it was uh, in one part of Southern California where they were right in the middle of the Jesus movement, and so she was right there. And she was a woman pastor, which was very unpopular. Mostly pastoring is a man profession, right. but we she had a ton of these kids came to her. And a lot of them needed deliverance. And she was casting demons out because they were coming out of the drug culture, hallucinogenics and everything. And I said, well, do you ever hear like Keith Green? She goes, Keith Green, Keith Green, and which our audience would know, uh, Keith Green walked into my church barefoot, barefoot. He came to church. He walked right up to the piano in the middle of the service, banged out one or two songs, and then walked out. She said, that was my introduction to Keith Green. Now, all of that was wrong. He didn't get permission. He didn't come right. dressed right. It's just he got discipled a little bit later on. He was like Lonnie Frisbee. Right. And Lonnie was a wild man. Lonnie was, you know, uh, uh, Lonnie actually, a lot of Christians would have a problem with this. He actually got saved on an acid trip. On the acid trip, he had this clarifying moment when he realized he was called to preach the gospel, and he left the wilderness and the acid behind and repented and gave his life to Jesus. I don't recommend that for anybody to get <laughs> yeah, saved, but I'm, re I'm researching Lonnie, and I'm going, oh my gosh, everything about this I would have a problem with if I was Chuck Smith back then. So let's be really careful. One final thought. 20% gene. This is this got me mad today. I'm in a wrong state of mind for Flashpoint because I get provoked over this. 20% of Gen Z identify as transgender mm. because the doctrine of transgenderism, I just finally figured it out today. It says that your soul can be male or female and accidentally put in the wrong body. But I'm talking about a psychological disorder that has demons that get attached to it and the pharmaceutical industry that's making billions of dollars and the leftist Democrat machine that is putting it into the school system for political purposes. This is the generation that's about to get bust loose. We've got to really go for the Gen Z's because Satan has taken them over with crazy talk about them being in the wrong bodies. Hey, yep, so true, Lance. I was thinking um, that was radical for our day. What will you do when transgenders walk in your church, Pastor? What are you going to do? And I think that's the, the message we need to be uh, prepared for. We're going to see we are in the midst of a great awakening. Uh, we're just beginning to see more and more and more of this happen spreading all around America. It started with Asbury, or that was the last, the most notable. Uh, but listen, it's coming. You, you better be ready. Uh, there's a lot of churches that missed it during the Jesus movement. And a lot of people were turned away. And how tragic that was. We have a great opportunity to show God's love and to help people transition back to Christ. Now more than ever, it's time for the Flashpoint Army to return our country to its biblical roots. And we're coming to a city near you to help make that happen. 
On the next stop of the 2023 Flashpoint Live Truth and Freedom Tour, join us May 11th through the 12th at Cornerstone Nashville Church, Nashville, Tennessee. Then, from June 8th through the 9th, we head to Faith Life Church in New Albany, Ohio. After that, on July 30th, it's back home to begin the week of the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. Coming back to the Omaha area, we'll be at the Mid-America Center in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And just at it. On October 5th and 6th, we'll be at Living Word Christian Center in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. New year, new cities, events that you do not want to miss. For more information, visit us online at govictory.com slash FP Live. Space is limited. Register today. 